After seven years of the Switch being the flagship console of Nintendo, it finally seems like the tides are changing. With rumors of a new console on the horizon, there are so many questions to be had. What will this new console be called? What new features will it have? And what games will be coming out for it? And also, if it's not called the Switch 2, will we change our channel name? No. However, with such a big year ahead of us, there is so much to predict and talk about. So without wasting any more time, let's take a way too early look at Nintendo's 2024. First up, January. Wait, it's almost over. Uh... First up, February. You already know what that means, Nintendo Direct, Wednesday, February 7th. We've been getting these Nintendo Directs in early February like clockwork every year since 2021, and I wouldn't be shocked if we get another one this year. As noted in past February Directs, these showcases are usually centered around games coming out that year, so nothing from 2025 will be announced in this Direct. Firstly, I believe we'll get an overview trailer for the Mario vs. Donkey Kong game. That game comes out February 16th, and they love showing off soon-to-release games in these directs to get people hyped. The next, I think it's highly likely we get some sort of Super Mario Wonder DLC announced. This could be anything, new badges, new online modes, or even an entirely new campaign or world. Personally, I'd love to see a challenge world that brings back a timer just for these levels somewhat similar to Luigi U. Whatever the case, Super Mario Wonder was such a creative and refreshing new take on the 2D Mario formula, and I'd love for them to continue expanding upon this game. I'm expecting a Mario Day release, as while I think a big Mario game is coming, I think it'll be later this year, and it makes sense to occupy that March 10th date with something somewhat small. Then again, I think we'll be getting an overview trailer for Princess Peach Showtime. That game comes out in March, and I'm just really curious what exactly this game is. We've seen very limited gameplay, and I'm curious how they're going to try and sell this game. Then, after an onslaught of JRPGs and farming simulators, Nintendo is going to get to the end of the presentation with a teaser for their next Nintendo system. In this trailer, I expect a first glimpse at the new Switch design, and maybe even a few new games, notably a new 3D Mario game. After a very brief trailer, Nintendo will display 2024 on the screen, giving us fans an absolute heart attack in putting the rest of the year into absolute overdrive. But we won't hear anything else about this unnamed console until their June presentation. But with Nintendo's next generation console now announced to the public, Nintendo hype is going to be so back. But that's not the only presentation happening in February. We'll also be getting a Pokemon Day Pokemon Presents. I expect it to be pretty tame like usual, maybe a new puzzle game, a couple new auxiliary projects like a movie or an event, but I wouldn't be shocked to see a new main game. I definitely don't expect Gen 10 to be up next, and I'm not sure it's quite time for Gen 5 remakes. In my opinion, it's either going to be a new Legends game or Let's Go Johto. And of course, like most of us, I'm rooting for a new Legends game. But Pokemon Go is still going strong eight years after its release, and trying to rack in even more users through the Let's Go series isn't a bad business decision. But I'm going to say it's Pokemon Legends Mew. I know lots of people are theorizing Legends Kiram, but Mew and Gen 1 are just so much more popular with the general audiences that it just makes sense to go with Mew, in my opinion. And I can't say I'm not also a Pokemon casual who loves myself some Pidgeotto and Ekans. So yeah, lock it in, Pokemon Legends Mew, November 2024. Then in March, Princess Peach's Showtime will be released, as well as the new Super Mario DLC. Then skipping over April, in May, Nintendo's going to shadow drop the Game Boy and Game Boy Advance Pokemon games on Nintendo Switch Online. Every game from Gen 1 to Gen 3 will finally be on the Switch, and offer online trading and battles as well as integration with Pokemon Home. But then June is where things are going to really heat up. While I'd love another in-person live event like the Switch's January presentation in 2017, I think we're going to get a standard hour-long direct. However, this is going to be one for the ages. Of course, the star of the show is the brand new Switch console, which will aptly be named the Nintendo Switch 2. No shocker there. But the first 25 minutes of this Direct will be solely dedicated to an overview of the Switch 2. First and foremost, the most obvious visual difference are going to be the Joy-Cons. These Joy-Cons are going to be a lot bigger. They're going to be much more ergonomic and, according to Nintendo, feel much better in our hands. However, they have removed the IR camera in the right Joy-Con, which I'm not sure will be missed by anyone. Another welcomed hardware addition will be a 1080p OLED screen. Will this cost Nintendo more money? Yes. Will it end up affecting the price of the console? Yes. Will we hear about that price in this Direct? No. But they will be putting this pretty screen to use with their new clear dock. With this, the Switch interface will transform into a clock reminiscent of their first portable systems, the Game & Watch. You'll be able to unlock new clock themes through achievements as well as buying them from the Nintendo eShop. 
And yes, we're getting themes, believe it or not. The Switch's UI, surprisingly enough, will be very similar to the one on the Switch. Not sure if this is a hot take, but the Switch's UI is very simplistic and basically has everything I'd ever want. Is it fun and interactive as the Wii or Wii U's? Not really, but again, we're in a new era with the Switch, and having a polished experience is something I think they're trying to strive for. Moving to the graphical specs, this Switch will finally run at 1080p 60 frames per second. No, it's not 4K, but anyone who actually expects 4K has actually lost their damn mind. We all know Nintendo's gotta be one generation behind graphically, but as seen from the jump from 1080 to 4K, it's really a minimal difference. It's the law of diminishing returns, and in this case, this is gonna really work out for Nintendo. Games like Tears of the Kingdom and basically every Pokemon game on the Switch are gonna look and run way better on the Switch too. Speaking of that, yes, backwards compatibility is back. And it would be downright criminal if after porting and remastering and re-releasing basically every game they've ever made to the Nintendo Switch, that they would just lock these games back on obsolete hardware. And yes, this also includes NSO. Anything that is currently playable on the Switch will also be playable on the Switch too. It only makes sense to do this. The biggest problem new consoles face are small and lackluster libraries, but... Doing this immediately solves that problem, and puts the Switch 2 in great shape for a successful year one. So, games. What are we looking at? Well, I think we're looking at quite a stellar lineup for the Switch 2. Firstly, after seven years of waiting, we're finally going to get our first trailer for Metroid Prime 4. Yes, this game is not cancelled, and will be coming out in early 2025. As for Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door Remake, that comes out July 12th, and we'll be getting a bit of spotlight before moving on to one of the big announcements of the Direct. Donkey Kong Country Arctic Melt, or whatever they decide to call this game, will be one of the Switch 2's first games releasing in fall 2024. After that, Mario's Super Party, featuring all brand new boards and minigames, will be announced with a 2025 release date. Then, as things are starting to slow down, and it seems like this direct is finally winding down, you'll hear these words. EA Sports, it's in the game. And then, you'll see the words NCAA Football 25 coming to the Nintendo Switch. Nintendo has officially made its triumphant comeback and won back the casual fans, all in one fell swoop with the return of not just EA Sports, but NCAA College Football. But as always, there's gotta be one last thing. The lights dim, and a green pipe appears on screen. Mario jumps out of a pipe, and turns to take a look at New Donk Tower. And what does he see? Donkey Kong, wearing a hat, with eyes. The screen cuts to black and a logo pops on the screen. Super Mario Odyssey 2, 2024. Now, I don't know how Universal is going to feel about that King Kong reference, but yes, Super Mario Odyssey 2 will be coming out in 2024 with a playable Donkey Kong. And just like that, Nintendo's biggest Direct in 7 years will be coming to an end. With a comprehensive look at the Nintendo Switch 2, two massive 2024 releases, and a stacked 2025 slate. July comes and goes with the final OG Switch release with Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door Remake coming out on the 19th. And then following that, there's not going to be much news until our final pre-Switch 2 Direct in September. This one's going to be a lot smaller in comparison to the big one we had in June, but it's really just here to give important details along with some new announcements. Firstly, the Switch 2 will release on October 25th and retail at $3.99. Yeah, I'm not thrilled about that price either, but realistically, that's the more likely road we're heading towards. However, they will also be releasing a digital-only Switch 2 for only $3.49. Again, Nintendo loves their inconsequential controversies, and a high price and a digital-only system seem like prime contenders for that role. Besides that, we'll be getting release dates for both Mario Odyssey 2 and Luigi's Mansion 2 HD. And believe it or not, they're both going to be Switch 2 launch titles, also coming out on October 25th. Metroid Prime 4 will be getting a full-on overview trailer and look just as stunning as the Metroid Prime Remaster. Look for a March 2025 release. Then for the final announcement of the final Direct of the Year, we will learn about a new Animal Crossing game in the works. Sounds crazy because New Horizons seems like it came out yesterday, but it was the second best selling game on the Switch, and they would be stupid to not get that out for early in the Switch 2's life cycle. Again, expect a 2025 release. Then finally, October's here, and so is the Switch 2. Mario Odyssey 2 and Luigi's Mansion 2 HD crush as launch day titles, as well as the Switch 2 basically being sold out everywhere. And of course Twitter's gonna go crazy with the inevitable malfunctions happening, calling Nintendo's quality control into question, but aside from the occasional screen bugs and bent Switch consoles, it'll be a somewhat smooth launch. Oh, and also, 
Joy-Con Drift is gone. And then finally, to end the year off, we'll be getting Pokemon Legends Mew on November 15th, as well as Donkey Kong Country Bananza, or whatever, on December 5th. All in all, Nintendo's 2024 is going to be hype. And if it isn't, that really sucks. But I really think it's gonna bang. But to quickly review, let's go through what games will be coming out this year, what the Switch 2 will be like, and what other games will be coming to the Switch in the near future. Hypothetically, of course. We'll be getting Mario vs. Donkey Kong in February, Mario Wonder DLC and Princess Peach's Showtime in March, Pokemon Gens 1 through 3 on NSO, Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door in July, Super Mario Odyssey 2 and Luigi's Mansion 2 HD headlining the Switch 2's release, Pokemon Legends Mew in November, and Donkey Kong Country 6 in December. The Switch 2 will be $399 with a digital-only version retailing for $349. It'll have a 1080p OLED screen with ergonomic controllers, a clear dock, and obviously have backwards compatibility. And then finally for a bonus, we'll be getting Metroid Prime 4, Mario's Super Party, and a new Animal Crossing all in 2025. Not bad if I say so myself, but but I don't work at Nintendo, so what do I know? If you want to help me get a job there, send this video to Nintendo's email found in the description. Anyways, thanks for watching, and go check out this video right here discussing the future of 3D Mario. Personally, I thought it was like one of my best videos, but I don't know, you'll have to go view it for yourself. Alright, have a good one. Bye.